Hello. Uh, today, I'm doing a video lesson for you. Um, I found out yesterday I was able to get a, um, a COVID vaccination if I go to Winston-Salem on Thursday. So I'm gonna videotape about a 20 <clears throat> to 30 minute lesson. And if you'll watch that, please. And then the rest of the time you can uh, get in groups and study for the test. The test is on Monday. Of course, I don't meet you on Friday. So uh, I think it'll be a good time to do this. So take, take about 20, 25 minutes to watch the video and then uh, get in groups and try to, to study uh, for the test. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. <clears throat> All right, so what we do, the, the last part uh, of the lesson is to uh, application. Application is like the higher level. And so the things that you learned, all these proportionalities you learned about, uh, if you can apply them to real situations like in physics, uh, that's really my goal for you there. Uh, you can also use this, you can apply it to economic uh, equations, uh, math equations, uh, electronics, uh, engineering. You can do it with almost any place that you deals with uh, proportionalities, okay? Well, the one we uh, got done with today was uh, we talked about the butter gun, and that was to introduce you to the uh, inverse square proportionality, which is a very, very big one in uh, physics. Uh, most people can understand uh, direct proportionalities and inverse proportionalities, but inverse square is found a lot in physics. If you take a look at the drawing here, uh, when somebody stands on the Earth, they are already 4,000 miles away from the center of gravity. So they're one Earth radius away, and they might weigh, for example, 200 pounds, like it says there. <clears throat> now, if you were to move another 4,000 miles away from the Earth's surface, um, you would now be two Earth radiuses away. So the distance from the center of gravity would be two times bigger. Well, because it's inverse square, if the distance gets two times bigger, then the weight, your uh, gravity, the weight of you will be not two, but four times smaller or one fourth of what you used to weigh. So if you used to weigh 200 pounds, one fourth that is 50. So you'd weigh 50 pounds here. And again, at 4,000 miles away from your surface, you're still not weightless. You're still weigh 50 pounds. This is not why astronauts are weightless. We'll, t <coughs> we'll talk about that later. <coughs> On the other diagram, if you were to move um, here we moved another 4,000, another 4,000, another 4,000. So if you move 12,000 miles away from the Earth's surface, you'd actually be 16,000 miles away from the center of Earth's gravity. So now you would have been four Earth radiuses away from the center of gravity. So distance got four times greater. Your weight will get not four, but 16 times smaller or one sixteenth of what it used to be and 1 16th of 200 pounds is around 12.5 pounds. So even at that far away, 12,000 miles away from the Earth's surface, you still weigh 12.5 pounds. So gravity and distance show an inverse square proportionality. That's a real famous one there. Another one is um, sound intensity and distance. Um, I told one class that people in my era that went to rock concerts, um, they, they didn't know how popular they were gonna be when they got real popular. And so, so many people would go, come and they couldn't hear. So the, the uh, event organizers just get, made bigger and bigger speakers. And so if you were in the front, you thought you had a good seat, but you would get your ears blasted out with these great big speakers because they had to be huge to let the people in the back be able to hear the music. And so what happened is, of course, uh, people in my era, a lot of them that went to a lot of concerts, they uh, definitely became hard of hearing uh, by the time they were 50, even 60 years old. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so let's say you were standing uh, way over here. Let's say you were right here. Let's say you were one, 10 feet, 10 feet away from a speaker, and you said, hey, uh, that sounds pretty good to me. What if you were to move another 10 feet away, or another way of saying that, distance got two times greater, the sound intensity would not be <clears throat> two times smaller, but four times smaller. It's inverse square proportionality. So it would sound as if it was only one fourth of the intensity. <clears throat> what if you moved all the way back here where you're one, two, 
three, four, five times further away from the uh, speaker, now the intensity would be not five times smaller, but 25 times smaller. So it would sound like 1 25th of the loudness to you. Uh, now to prevent that nowadays, uh, people simply have some speakers for the people in the front and then they hook up some other speakers back here. Now they don't have to blast people. Even, even churches do that. You have speakers for the front people and speakers for the back people. There you go. <clears throat> so that's called, that's another inverse square proportionality. <clears throat> um, another one that is very famous is light. Uh, light intensity, just like sound intensity, is inverse square. So if you were, and, and there are many, many ways of measuring light intensity. One of them is lux. Another one is um, candelas. Uh, another one is uh, the old one they use called foot candles, which was uh, how bright a light would be if you, for a standard candle if you were seeing it one foot away. And we don't use that anymore, not, not very often, foot candles. But whatever unit that is, if you had a certain flashlight here and it was uh, a certain distance away from your eye, it would have a certain brightness. So let's just say that brightness is 100 lux. Well, what if you were to, to move twice as far away, uh, the distance got two times further, then the light intensity would get not two times smaller, but four times smaller or one fourth. So it would be cut down to maybe 25 um, units of light intensity. Anyway, it's the same story. <clears throat> and so light's interesting because uh, if you get too far away from a light, you, you really don't get very much. The same thing happened in ninth grade when you use a microscope when you switch from low power to high power, you actually saw, um, you spread that light even more. You only saw a little bit of the light. And that's why it got so dim and under high power. Okay, another one I wanna show you is, a um, famous one is um, radioactive decay. And it's just a little uh, graph right here. And it's a thing called half-life. And half-life does this same thing where it's the amount of time it takes for half of this material to decay into another material, another chemical. And if you'll see that, it kind of goes through that same uh, decay principle there in uh, this kind of an inverse square proportionality there. Okay, I wanna show you one other thing. Uh, I wanna move into um, another realm, and that's where you actually look at equations and you can find out what kind of proportionalities they are. So uh, if you have in your packet, <clears throat> if you'll go to the page, <clears throat> that looks like a bunch of equations. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this right here. And this is also a thing called application. And I'm going to magnify just a little bit here. Okay, maybe you see that a little bit better. And so what I want to do is, you now know that you could look at a data table and maybe figure out what the proportionality is. You now know that you could look at a graph and maybe figure out the proportionality. You know how to do a secondary graph to straighten out the curve to kind of prove what the proportionality is. But what if you were given an equation? So let's try a simple one. Uh, this is the one we uh, dealt with a long time ago, density. And this equals mass over volume. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides times V, and then I'm going to take the equation out of fractional form. So here we go, M equals DV. Okay, so without doing any experiments, somebody else has already done these experiments, but here's what I can tell by looking at an equation. <clears throat> here it goes. If density is held constant, so I cover up that, notice that M and V are on opposite sides the equal sign. You can say, M and V are directly proportional to each other. So what would happen uh, if you had something whose density did not change, like a piece of copper? What if you had the mass of that copper get five times greater? What would happen to the volume of that copper? It would get five times greater. Okay, that's directly proportional. Uh, look over here. What if I cover up V? What if V is held constant? Uh, what if, how was mass and density uh, related, they are also directly proportional if V is held constant. So if you did an experiment where uh, some gas and you held the volume constant, what would happen if you were to make the mass uh, five times greater? 
it would make the density of that gas five times greater. <clears throat> and then the other one is, what if I hold the mass constant, then notice that D and V are inversely proportional. And so <clears throat> if you held the mass of, uh, let's say, a balloon full of air, held it constant, <clears throat> what would happen if the, the volume got 10 times smaller? You squeeze the balloon, so the volume got 10 times smaller. If the volume get 10 times smaller, the density would get 10 times larger because they're inversely proportional. And it's, it's really a great application if you can just look at any equation and say, I know how they're related. <clears throat> so let's take another one. <clears throat> this is the most, probably most, one of the most famous uh, equations in all of um, electricity. It's called Ohm's law. <clears throat> v stands for voltage and I is current and R is resistance. And so if I were to hold a uh, voltage constant, notice that I and R are inversely proportional, meaning if the current, uh, let's say the resistance got three times greater, you put three times more light bulbs in there, the resistance got three times greater, then it would drop your current to three times smaller or one third of what it used to be. The current would actually drop if the voltage was held constant. What if we keep the amount of resistors like light bulbs, keep that constant, how is our V and I uh, proportional? They are directly proportional. So if you keep the resistance constant, and what if you were to increase the voltage by two times? What if you double the voltage, then you would actually double the current going through that, that uh, circuit. And again, you've never even been taught this, and yet you can look at the equation and find out how they're related. <clears throat> Let's do another one. Uh, circles and diameters and pi. Uh, notice that pi is a constant. We already know it's a constant. It's so famous, it got its own symbol. And so diameter and circumference are directly proportional. So if you take any circle and measure the circumference, measure the diameter, and then all of a sudden you make the circle bigger. What if you were to make the diameter six times bigger? What would the new circumference, how would that uh, relate to the old circumference? it would be six times bigger than the old circumference because they're directly proportional. <clears throat> and even if I were to replace this with 2R, like diameter 2R times pi, the uh, same thing would happen because circumference and radius are still directly proportional. So even if you were to triple the radius, it would triple the circumference because two is a constant. And the, uh, I'm sorry, and then, uh, I'm sorry, this is pi. And pi is a constant, so constants don't figure into proportionalities here. Um, here's another one. Um, let's see. This is distance equals speed times time. Okay, let's try it. Uh, what if I hold distance constant, then speed and time are inversely proportional to each other. So if you're going to go to grandma's house, that distance doesn't change. But if you go at one speed, it'll take you so many hours to get there. But what if you got, what if your speed was cut in half? What if the speed got two times smaller? Then the time would have to get two times larger. It would take you twice as long to get to grandma's house because they're inversely proportional. I wanna show you another one that you could think about. Um, this is one that is in some chemistry books and it's called the combined gas law equation. And it combines uh, Charles law <clears throat> and Boyle's law and Gay-Lussac's law and it puts them all together, and this is pressure, this is volume, this is number of moles, this is a gas law constant, so it's kind of like pi, it's not gonna change, and this is the Kelvin temperature. <clears throat> now, you've never seen this equation, but you should already be able to tell me something about it. What if, what if I hold the number of moles constant and the temperature constant, and that's already constant, then what can you tell me about pressure and volume? Well, that's Boyle's law. They're inversely proportional. If pressure were to go up, let's say five times greater, the volume of that gas would get five times smaller, go to one fifth of what it used to be. Let's try another one. How is pressure related to Kelvin temperature? That means all the rest of these have to be held constant, so don't look at them. Pressure is directly proportional to Kelvin temperature. So if the Kelvin temperature were to get three times greater, then the pressure of that gas will get three times greater. Of course, the volume is not allowed to get any bigger. 
So temperature got three times greater, the pressure would get three times greater. Let's try another one. What would happen to, uh, how about volume? How is volume related to the number of moles? Okay, well, they're directly proportional. That's assuming you don't let the pressure change, you don't let the temperature change. So if you had a certain volume, imagine a balloon had a certain amount of uh, uh, moles of gas in it, and it had a certain volume. Now, what if you were to triple the number of moles of gas in there uh, without changing pressure or anything, it would actually triple the volume of that gas. What I think is amazing about this whole unit is that you can apply this to a graph. You can apply it to a data table. You can apply it to a, an equation, a chemical, or chemically, I mean, a, a mathematical equation. And you can pick any one you want. We'll do one more and I'll probably um, leave you with that. Let's go down here. The volume of a sphere, as you probably know, is four thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you look at that, what is four thirds? When is four thirds not four thirds? It always is, so it's a constant. And what is pi? It's a constant. What is a constant times a constant? It's another constant. So I can actually write here, I'm gonna write this right here. I'm gonna rewrite this and so you can see it, the volume of the sphere equals a constant times a constant, which is a constant, times r cubed. Now, think about that. That looks like one of the patterns. That's in one of the patterns here. But it's, which one is it? Direct proportionality, direct square, direct square root, or is it something new? And if you think about the pattern, this is a direct cube proportionality. So volume is directly proportional to the cube of radius. Now what's interesting is, just like the direct square, direct square might look like this, a direct cube proportionality would simply increase a little bit faster. But it would still be, it would still fit the mold of the patterns we were looking at in a direct cube proportionality. So what would happen if I had a, 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 a sphere and its volume was uh, X, and then you made another sphere whose volume was three X. So what did I do? Um, what did I do to the radius? Radius got three times bigger. Radius got three times bigger. What effect would that have on the volume? How much water would this ball hold versus that one? And if you think about it, if radius gets three times bigger, the volume has to get three, no, three squared, no, three cubed times bigger. The volume will get 27 times bigger than it was before. Now, if this volume right here was 10, 10 cubic centimeters, then this one would have to be 27 times bigger than that, 270 cubic centimeters. Now, you can say to yourself, I don't believe that. It's true, though. It's true. And so people have to know this. Like, imagine this. Imagine that somebody had a, a pill that was in the form of a ball, a sphere, and they knew it had X amount of chemicals in there. And they said, you know what? Some people wanted to have double strength. And I think I'll just make this uh, new pill twice the radius or twice the diameter, either one. Uh, why would that be a bad idea? Because if the radius gets uh, two times bigger, what is the volume going to do? It's going to get not two, not two squared, but two cubed. The volume of this is going to be eight times greater. So whatever chemicals used to be okay and not kill people, you're going to give them eight times that chemical, you're going to kill somebody. Okay, so that's what you have to be careful about. Maybe that person wasn't paying attention when they did proportionalities one day. So in a sphere world, if you uh, double the radius or diameter, then the volume increases eight times. This is very similar to that chapter you had on scaling. You just now know how it works mathematically. So what I want you to do the rest of the period is get in groups and look at all these equations and, and, and talk to each other and say, hey, if you, this is held constant, then these are directly proportional. And if you double that, this would double and do all that for all these equations until you feel comfortable with it. And then also practice by picking a random uh, graph, a random data table, and see if you can figure out what proportionality it is. And then I think you'll be in pretty good shape for the test on Monday.
Okay, so that's all I have today, and I will be back in school on Friday, uh, but I won't have your class. So if you want to come and see me on Friday, you can do that. Well, thank you very much for paying attention, and um, good luck on the test.